Hi, I'm Nick with DuramaxTuner.com. Behind me we have our 2020 L5P. The reason we're looking at this truck is because we get a lot of questions about air intakes. Now the factory did a really nice job engineering a forward-facing Ram Air style hood scoop on this truck. And normally I'm of the mindset that if it looks this good from the factory, I might not change it. But there's a lot of calls and my team says we want to know, so after the data we go. So we're going to look and see what the data say about changing the air intake on this truck. Cost, looks, spool up, peak power, fitment, any other issues that you might run into, we're going to cover it all in this shootout. Let's talk test protocol. We're on a chassis dyno with a load cell brake. We're going to bring our 2020 L5P up against that brake at 1700 RPM in 7th gear. And we're going to sweep it for 7 seconds up to 3200 RPM. This should give us a really good picture of the power window that the L5P makes power in. Usually these trucks make peak power right around 2900 RPM. So we'll get to see how the truck performs from peak torque up to peak power and just a little bit beyond that. As far as tune files go, we elected to use the tune file that we currently have pending certification. So this is a tune that is clean. It's designed for car BO. It has been run. It's got a lot of testing behind it and we know what to expect from it. With that tune file, we have five positions switchable. Now we elected to test three of those positions. We're gonna test the stock position. We're gonna test the tow position and we're gonna test the sport position, which is the hot file. The reason we're gonna test those three positions is because each intake may make more power or less power at each given position. And from those data, we'll be able to say, you know, maybe at this power level, you should add the air intake. Maybe at this power level, you shouldn't. So we wanna kinda of get a picture of where in the modification process, where in the additional power range, you know, as you modify the truck, at what point do you think maybe we should add an intake? This is my own personal truck. This is the truck I take the family out to dinner in. The only mod on this truck is a Stealth 64 and a Tune. Now the Tune is not built for the Stealth 64. It is our EO Tune, so it's not a, it's not a hot tune for the turbocharger. The reason we elected to use this truck instead of a truck that's turned up higher is because any changes in the data, any good or bad data that we see on this truck is only gonna be magnified in the situation where you have a higher power truck. So if the data is convincing here, it should be extra convincing there. Because we're a little bit on the nerdy side, we like our measurements. We like to see what's going on. So we're going to use HP tuners. We're going to log every run. Tim's going to take care of that for me. He's going to run the truck on the dyno. He's going to log every run, and we're going to review that, that data. What data are we looking for? We're looking at boost pressure. We're looking at mass airflow. We're looking at fuel flow rate. We're looking at grams per cylinder of airflow. And we're looking at peak power. So we're going to look at all those pieces and try and get a clear picture of what's going on as we change from one intake to the other. The reason we're looking at all that data is because that's the stuff that makes sense in the real world. When you have the truck on the street, when you have the truck hooked up to a camper and you're pulling up a mountain and you're <laughs> trying to look for all the airflow you can get, that airflow number, that mass airflow number, that fuel rate, that indicates total power availability, boost pressure, stuff you're gonna see on the gauge. So, you know, these numbers that we're looking at on the dyno are in my opinion the most relevant numbers to compare to the real world to see how you're going to enjoy the intake or not enjoy the intake. All right, so what intakes did we test? Well, for one, we tested the stock air box. Then we tested the S&B and the WC fab intake. You might ask yourself, why didn't you test any others? Well, it's a 2020 truck and most of the manufacturers that we called about 2020 stuff didn't have it or they had 17 to 19 only or they were out of stock. So Believe us, we knocked on every door we could. These are the two we could get a hold of and the stock one. I think it's gonna paint a good picture for you. All right, let's start the comparison. So first of all, cost. The S&B intake, quite a bit less expensive than the WC Fab intake. So the S&B is coming in at 349 and the WC Fab unit is coming in at 599. The S&B unit is available in one configuration the WC Fab unit is available in basically any color under the rainbow powder coat wise. All right, let's talk looks. Now these two intakes are built for two entirely different audiences. I've been to UCC, I've been to SEMA. I know you guys with American Forces on your trucks. You probably like the WC Fab stuff. You like the color choices in the powder coat. You like the sheet metal look. I get it, it's that style. You guys who like stock appearing stuff, you're probably gonna favor the S&B. It looks very factory, OEM under the hood, not a lot of flair basically a logo and otherwise stockish appearing. A couple more things I wanna add here. The S&B has a clear window. As a guy who sees a lot of trucks come through the shop that have 30, 50, 100,000 miles on an aftermarket air filter, 
I see a lot of guys who don't change their air filters. Now, whether or not they see that they're dirty or not, I don't know, but with the clear lid, you have no excuse not to see that your air filter's filthy and clean it, which you should be doing regularly. Installation-wise, I grilled Jaden. He's the one who put these intakes on. I could not get him to tell me one way or the other which one he preferred to install. I'll take that as they probably install about the same. So I don't think you're gonna have any issue putting either of these intakes on the truck. He said they both fit pretty well. Um, everything went together pretty smoothly. He really had no complaints about either. All right, now it's the point you've been waiting for. The nerd out session, the peak power, the airflow, all the fun stuff, right? You go ahead and you put a WC fab intake on a stock tuned truck, you get about 413 horsepower. That's a gain of six horsepower. You're not gonna feel that in the seat of your pants. Same thing with the S&B, 412 horsepower. So the two are neck and neck. That's within a statistical deviation, all right? So basically, the two aftermarket intakes performed about the same, about five or six horsepower, six or seven horsepower, whatever you wanna call it, over stock on the stock tune. I'm not gonna go out and recommend all stock tune guys buy an air intake to make their truck perform better. Similarly, airflow data. Did not see an appreciable gain in boost, did not see an appreciable gain in mass airflow, um, did not see an appreciable gain in fuel flow rate. So basically all of the indicators as to is the truck breathing more and therefore fueling more to make extra horsepower, it's not. So the extra horsepower that you saw, that five or six horsepower is probably just the ability of the truck to inhale a little bit easier and that's where you're seeing that extra power come from. Quick note here. People are gonna ask me, is one intake gonna give better or worse fuel mileage than another intake? I will tell you that most of the time you're driving the truck, you are not using 407 horsepower or more. And you can see what little gain an aftermarket intake gives you at 407 rear wheel horsepower. If you're driving below that, you're gonna get even less of a gain. Even less of a gain in efficiency. We're talking less than 1%. So no, adding an aftermarket air intake is not gonna net you an increase in fuel economy. All right, so let's take this thing up a notch. Let's go to the tow tune. Now, when we put the tow tune on the truck, we're seeing 440 rear wheel horsepower on the stock tune. We add the WC fab intake and we see 469 rear wheel horsepower. That's 30 horsepower gain. That's huge. We're not even seeing a major increase in fuel usage. So we're going from 119 uh, milligrams per stroke to 120. So not a huge increase in fuel usage. We are seeing more airflow. Um, so we're going from 59.96 pounds per minute up to 62.43, so a little bit of extra airflow, but still, that's a big jump in power. Similarly, the S&B intake picks up, not quite to 470, but we're seeing 465 to the tire, 465.3. We're seeing a similar increase in mass airflow and a similar increase in boost. So stock tunes making about 29 pounds of boost, WC Fab 31, S&B 32, uh, 31.7. So they both picked up you know, both the aftermarket intakes picked up strongly on the tow tune. All right, so let's pick it up again. Let's go to the sport tune. This is a tune that makes 529 rear wheel horsepower on the stock air box. So this thing should really net some power on the WC fab intake, right? So we put the WC fab intake on, we see 551 rear wheel horsepower. That, that's from 65, 65 pounds per minute on the stock air box up to 72 or 71 and a half pounds per minute on the aftermarket air box. So now we're really seeing the increment um, in, in airflow. Same with boost. We go from 33.6 PSI up to 38.6 PSI. That's a huge jump. Similar kind of story for the S&B. So we're up to 548 rear wheel horsepower with the S&B, only three horsepower behind WC Fab's intake. Boost is up, airflow is up, all the numbers are up. I mean, really we're going from 64 pounds per minute up to 72 pounds per minute is the story. That's a, nice, that's a nice jump. All right, so for you nerds who really wanna see every ounce of data we have, we're gonna put the data screen up for you to look at. Go ahead and pause the video and look through all the data to your heart's content. My analysis, if you're gonna go anything over stock power on an L5P, it probably makes sense to upgrade the intake. For the money, it's a really nice net in power, and I think the truck appreciates the extra airflow. Certainly, we'll keep the truck cooler, we'll make the extra power a lot easier, and basically put a bigger smile on your face. 
also, I like the sound. Both of these intakes have a nice extra, you know, turbo noise out of the fender well. Of course, the truck is fully emissions compliant, so you don't get anything out of the pipe. You don't hear a lot of extra noise anyway. But if you're looking for a little bit of extra noise under the hood, not obnoxious, but definitely some extra noise, especially with the passenger side window down, both of these air boxes deliver. All right, so you had a chance to pause the screen and look at the data, make those decisions for yourself. You know, I can do the analysis for you, but you can do your own analysis on the data. My biggest nitpick of my own test and of these air boxes is, is that all the airflow data is off the mass airflow sensor. And I don't have any way to back up that mass airflow sensor. That is, I, I don't have a way to back calculate what the true mass airflow is. So it's possible that these guys shrunk their pipe slightly or even expanded their pipe slightly where the mass airflow sensor fits. And any change in the cornering of that air or of the airflow you know, effects as that air goes through the uh, air filter and past the mass airflow sensor can easily alter the readings of the mass airflow sensor. If you alter the readings of the mass airflow sensor, I have no way to catch it. Also, the truck has no way to catch it. If you artificially inflate those numbers, the truck will fuel harder and will probably make more power anyway. What does that all mean, Nick? Well, it just means that there's an asterisk on all these tests, and that asterisk reads, all data assumes the mass airflow readings are true. Does that mean I should discount this whole video and walk away and click on some other clickbait crap? No, don't do that, okay? It's a good test. The power numbers show we definitely gain power. The airflow numbers show we definitely gain boost. The mass airflow numbers are pretty strong. So I'm gonna leave the intake on my truck. I'm not gonna tell you which one because honestly, I think it comes down to personal preference. Uh, they, both manufacturers did a nice job. I think they both hit their market pretty squarely. Uh, you really, the choice is which market do you fall in? Once you pick which market you fall in, I think you buy that intake. Either way, you're not gonna go wrong. You're gonna get an improvement in power. You're gonna get an improvement in drivability. Ah, spool up, drivability. Let's talk on that real quick. So we did see on both the trucks with the air intakes, the modified air intakes, when they left 1700 RPM on the dyno and they took off, we did see the power come up ever so slightly quicker on both the trucks with the intakes, faster than the stock intake. I will tell you that I felt that in the pedal driving the truck as well. The truck felt ever so slightly more responsive. So drivability wise, we see it on the dyno, we see the quicker response. I can tell you, I feel it on the street. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that as mildly conclusive evidence that both of them spool up a little bit quicker um, in actual usage. All right, so final thoughts. What did I leave out? My thoughts on the WC Fab intake. It's a nice piece, it's well fabricated, it's clean, it looks good. Any color you want, great, right? My critiques, I don't feel that it uses the Ram Air hood as well as the S&B intake or as well as the stock intake. I'd be a little bit concerned if I was driving in a lot of really wet situations and not rain wet, but like off-roading, water coming up, that sort of thing. I don't, it's not a sealed box. The S&B intake, you have the option to seal the box or unseal the box. When we ran the dyno test, we ran unsealed. Basically, it's a rubber piece that you pull out of the side of the air box. The fab intake is just basically more exposed. Now, of course, those little critiques that I have may have been what cost the S&B intake its extra power advantage, right? So the WC Fab basically outperformed the S&B on the power tests. That's life. Is that gonna carry as you add more power to the truck? Most likely. Um, so, you know, if you're like, if you're hot shot in the truck and over the roading it and using it, putting a lot of miles on the truck, I'm probably gonna recommend the S&B. If you are, a gearhead and want every ounce of power out of the truck and really care about the way it looks when you pop the hood, I'm probably gonna recommend the WC Fab intake for you. Basically, no matter what, if you are tuning your L5P, you should be considering an air intake. One of these two, whichever one fits you best, you make the choice. I'm Nick Pregnance, I hope this was a helpful video for you. If it was, click like, subscribe, whatever. Call us if you want some more help on your L5P modification process. 815-568-7920. We are happy to help. I will catch you on the next one.